Ukrainian MP Inna Sovsen, who is in uh, the Kiev region. A very warm welcome to you on Sky News. Describe for us, if you would, what uh, you can see taking place within the capital city. Well, the situation here is tense. We don't know whether the Russians would actually be able to get into the city. It seems that the Ukrainian army is fighting back. They did manage to attack them on northeast direction, and actually the Russian troops did have to surrender a bit uh, uh, closer to the Belarusian border, uh, which does give hope to all of us. Uh, but still, we know that they are not giving up and they can try to gather forces and to enter the city of Kiev, regardless of uh, two weeks of uh, fruitless attempts to do so. So the situation in Kiev, despite much, much better than in cities like Kharkiv or particularly Mariupol, uh, it's still tense because we are uh, we have seen what they're doing to the cities where they get into. And that is indeed extremely scary. So we do have to trust our army right now that they will actually manage to keep them on the entrances to the city. And also the city itself has been very strongly fortified. Uh, so there are checkpoints. Uh, it's extremely difficult to get into the city. So that has given us hope. But of course, we do see that the level of cruelty by the Russians is, is growing up. So, well, we have to, to get ready for anything to happen. Um, the mayor of Kiev says that uh, he believes that they have enough supplies to hold out for two weeks. Yes, that uh, seems to be uh, what has been happening in the past two weeks. Uh, the city has been getting prepared for potential blockade or a siege. Of course, the, the supply chains have been broken uh, and uh, the main route from the West uh, is now blockaded by the Russians because they do take did take control of that uh, road from the West. But it seems like, uh, well, there is enough to survive. Uh, but of course, that all depends on, on whether we shall be able to prevail and, and the Ukrainian army will manage to kick them further from the, from the capital. Uh, we again did see some success both in Kiev, we did see some success in Kharkiv, where they've been pushed uh, further from the city. But of course, those uh, terrible attacks from air is probably what is most terrifying, because what you are seeing now on the picture, now on the video, those are the results of attack from air. And there is not much Ukrainian army can do um, unless we do get some support in terms of uh, protecting our skies. So, um, Mr Klitschko also says that there are two, two million people, he believes, still in your capital city. And his brother says that actually people who initially fled are coming back to try and help fortify the city. Uh, well, the situation is diverse. Indeed, some people did uh, flee the city in different period of times. Then uh, many people who got evacuated from the neighboring cities of Irpin and Bucha, they are all actually getting located in the city as of right now, because uh, traveling, uh, traveling to the west is, is again complicated. Uh, and again, in the Kiev city itself, it does seem to be much, much uh, safer because the air defense is functioning much better than in many other areas. So people are coming back. Uh, we do see this trend, not just for the city of Kiev, but for Ukraine overall. We do know that since the first day of war, over 140,000 men returned from abroad uh, to fight in the army or in the territorial defense. So this is a general trend, which we hope will help us uh, save them, at least the capital city. And the humanitarian corridors don't seem to be working. I, have you any hope that they can work to get the people out who want to leave? Well, they do work with different um, success, I would say, because clearly the humanitarian corridor from the city of Mariupol are not working. Every time the Russians are promising any type of humanitarian corridor, they are either setting the land landmines there or they open fire. So as of right now, people are not even trying to get into the evacuation corridor from Mariupol, despite the situation over there being tragic. Uh, the Russians are bombarding the city from air every 30 minutes. And they're bombarding uh, not just the, the hospital, as we have seen, they're bombarding the residential area. So I think that the city of Mariupol is now the biggest victim in this Russian aggression, and they're trying to arrange for a full-scale blockade over there. As for other cities, uh, the evacuation did take place from the neighboring cities of Irpin, Vucha, and Hostomel near Kiev. Not from the first attempt. We did have uh, many uh, previous attempts where the Russian 
Russians uh, opened fire on people trying to evacuate. People are evacuating in, in extreme conditions. Uh, I did see pictures of people evacuating by walking on, on the small uh, river uh, in, in, in freezing weather. Uh, that's how they have to get out of, of the cities of Irpin because the, um, uh, because the, uh, the bridge was, uh, was destroyed over there. Uh, but, but it seems like we did manage to evacuate uh, uh, some number of people. Uh, according to the recent data from the Ukrainian government, about 50,000 people have been evacuated, but that's not nearly, nearly enough uh, uh, of what we need. And uh, particularly in some distant cities like in Sumer, it's extremely difficult to get evacuated and the Russians are always uh, trying to attack those corridors. So people are doing that, you know, uh, it, it's a gamble for them on their life. And Inna, I want to ask you, um, there are claims, fears that uh, Russia may be imminently about to use chemical weapons on the people of Ukraine. What do people in uh, Kiev think about that and how, how long, how hopeful are you that you can hold the capital city? Well, the chemical weapon is... Uh is a big threat. We are all extremely concerned. Uh, the Ministry of Health has been disseminated information about what you need to do in, in case of the chemical attack. Uh, we have another threat because uh, just about an hour ago, Ukrainian intelligence uh, uh, said that they have information that the Russians might try to arrange for some terrorist attack in the Chernobyl nuclear power station, with they, which they are holding from the first day of the attack. And that would be a threat not just to the Ukrainians, that would be a threat to the whole of Europe. And that is why, yeah, of course, we are extremely terrified. We are terrified for our lives, for the lives of our loved ones. And, and that is why we uh, we really hope that the West will intervene and uh, help us in that, uh, in terms of securing the no-fly zone so that we can, uh, you know, continue fighting on the ground and possibly pushing them further into, into their borders so that they will not... Uh, attack with chemical weapon and will not think about arranging some sort of terrorist attack on the nuclear power station. But the risk is real. It's here. We we are going to bed every day thinking about this. And, and this is, frankly speaking, just terrifying. And in terms of what you want to see coming from Western nations, you know, I mean, it looks like that, you know, the, the, uh, the no-fly zone isn't going to happen. What realistically do you think that you can get that you really need? No, we do need a no-fly zone. It doesn't change because they are killing us from air. They do have a superiority in the air. And uh, they have the superiority because they have uh, much more airplanes, but also because they are bombarding our civilian population. There is really very little we can do in terms of uh, helping our people all over Ukraine. And they are bombarding just random cities. Just this morning, we woke up to the news that they bombarded uh, two cities in Western Ukraine, where many, many people from the East have uh, relocated. And then one city in, in uh, center East Ukraine and the city of Dnipro, which is a very big city in the central Ukraine. So uh, that is still what we need. Uh, we cannot really win in this war without support from the air. And that's why we're asking for it so much, because if we have support from the air in any in, in any way possible, be it by giving us the, the fighter jets or giving us the air defense system that we can operate ourselves, that would be a crucial help. That would actually give us a winning chance in this terrible, terrible war that we are, uh, we are that Putin launched against us. So, so that is still the, the primary issue in terms of security securing um, the lives of Ukrainians. But because the second big thing that uh, we keep on asking is, is further uh, sanctions, because uh, the sanctions, uh, um, and I've just heard what uh, you were reporting about, so the personal sanctions, we really hope that they would have been uh, imposed way, way earlier. And we are happy that now uh, the United Kingdom is thinking about imposing the sanctions against people who uh, voted uh, to support the uh, recognition of, of those uh, People's Republic on the east of Ukraine. But we are also asking to impose personal sanctions against their family members because their children cannot be studying in the United Kingdom right now. That is not uh, how it should be. Their children should be, uh, you know, their visa should be cancelled as well. They should go back to Mother Russia. All the assets of their children, of their family members should be frozen because we do know that uh, they are not really, you know, signing up their own um, their bank accounts. They have money on the bank accounts on their, of their family members. So we are asking for, for individual sanctions because we believe that people who are responsible for what is happening to us, 
for killing Ukrainians, for killing our children, they need to have some personal effect in their own life, uh, be it uh, inability to travel, uh, frozen assets, uh, uh, their children not being able to continue their education in the United Kingdom. They should have some personal consequences because right now those consequences that uh, there are for Russia overall, the, the people who are directly responsible are not feeling them for themselves. OK, uh, really good of you to share your thoughts with us um, on Sky News. Inna Sobson, thank you very much. Thanks for having me.